What's going on everybody? I'm Trey Herrera and today I'm going to be talking about Boosted versus NA. Let's get it. Bruh. Now, before we even get started, what are the pros and cons of both? Now pros. Pros for NA applications. They're simple. They're super simple. Um, it's how they came from the factory, so they're, they're still NA, there's nothing extra about them, they're simple. Not a lot of moving parts. Usually NA applications have a lot more space than a boosted application because of the less moving parts. So that means they are generally easier to work on because you have less things in the engine bay. Maintenance is also usually easier on an NA engine because there's less stuff to deal with. So you, you're just working with the motor by itself. No nitrous, no turbocharger, no supercharger, nothing to that effect. So all you're really worrying about is honestly changing oil, changing spark plugs, making sure everything is clean. Really, it, it makes it a bit easier and gives you a bit of peace of mind. Now with the NA motor, usually they're easier to tune as well because there's less things to go over. You're not having to deal with boost pressures and fueling as much, as much, Usually a tuner will take a whole lot less time to tune a good NA motor in comparison to a good boosted motor. It's a, it's a lot simpler process. They produce way less heat in compared to a boosted application um, because you're only using what the engine is producing. You're not forcing all this extra air in, um, causing things to heat up. Naturally, when you add more air, it's going to heat up a little bit more, uh, especially under forced induction because they're adding a lot of air velocity. Um, so, less heat, which will give you much more consistent temperatures across the board on the motor. Um, so it's a little bit more predictable. They can be fast. With the right mods, uh, I know of a, a good handful of cars that go very, very fast on an NA setup. Now to make good horsepower on an NA setup, you usually have to do heads, cam, intake. All of these have to work together. You have to match these together and able to work correctly to get the end result you want. You can just throw parts at it and it will make power, but usually you're gonna mismatch stuff and it's gonna underperform in certain ways that you didn't expect. It Obviously everything's gonna be better than stock, but you may have this car that performs up top real good, but is a dog down low. So you gotta take all of this into consideration when building an NA car. Cons. Generally the cons of an NA motor is less potential horsepower. Um, obviously with boost, you're able to do things to produce more horsepower easier once it's already boosted. With a with an NA car, you're gonna have to do a lot more to get the same amount of horsepower as easily as a boosted application would. And if you want really big horsepower, you usually have to throw a whole lot more RPM at it. Now you gotta take this at face value because you could go all out and buy brand new everything. Uh, if you guys know me and you know the channel, you know I am all about saving some money. Um, and I would hope everybody is in the same boat. So if you could buy reliable parts from good vendors or people you know that took care of their parts, you could get a boosted setup for a lot cheaper. A heads cam intake setup, you're gonna spend you're gonna spend a good amount of money on mainly the heads and intake. The cam the cam part is pretty standard across the board, but the heads and intake are really gonna gonna cost you. Now let's face it, let's face it. Most V8 guys are drag racers and there's nothing wrong about that. Drag racing, you either, you need a lot of power to go fast in the quarter mile. Or if you're doing street pools in Mexico or something, you need a lot of power. So I get boost in that regard. I do know that I've seen several cars go nine seconds on an NA setup on the drag strip, but that's with a perfect setup. Last but not 
not least, the simplicity of an NA car is beautiful. It makes it very, very worry and stress free and it's something to consider when building a car. For me, I really like, I like both applications. I think both of them are awesome and when used in the proper way, both of them you will be very, very satisfied with. Now let's, let's talk boost, baby. Boost, baby. All right, boosted applications. Number one, they make really cool noises where the NA cars do not. Number two, a whole lot more potential horsepower. Um, depending on the setup you go with, Pro Charge, Super Charge, Turbo, Nitrous, you could pick your fire. So that means, that means you could pick the level of horsepower you want. Now granted, you're gonna be pushing buttons if you're on stock bottom end. You're gonna be like, oh no, but we're gonna send it anyway. So potential power, that's, a, that's an awesome one. Now with potential power, you gotta upgrade a lot more stuff. Now Boosted makes a lot of cool noises. You got the supercharger whine, like the LSA on my car, or you got the turbo whistle. Or you even got the, if you do the fly cut gears on a pro charger, they, they whine and whistle a little bit. And if you do a blow valve on that thing, it sounds like a spaceship. Usually with a really, really good boosted application, you're not having to modify the heads or anything like that. You could actually get away with stock heads and make a thousand horsepower on, on an LS setup. Now, if you don't believe me on that one, you could definitely check out Sloppy Mechanics. Sloppy Mechanics does a lot of these, these crazy builds where they take a junkyard motor, a smoky junkyard motor at that, don't change anything other than cam and springs, boost it to the moon, and they're making easy six, anywhere from 600 to 1,000 horsepower on a regular basis at their shop. Now generally when you get a boosted car, it will scare you. And that's a good part. I like being scared um, because it's super fun to get your, it gets your blood going until you get used to it. And that's where you have the issues where people get addicted to horsepower. So it makes it super fun to drive. Super fun to drive, lots of power, more power than you need for the streets, honestly. But, you know, I'm not gonna tell you not to do it because I did it, it's super fun. The cons of a boosted setup is more heat. Um, you definitely gotta, you definitely gotta watch all your gauges. Uh, you don't want things to overheat on you. Um, that, that causes detonation in the cylinders. You could potentially break more things. Damn. So with more heat and more power on these motors, you're gonna have to usually look at all the drivetrain components um, and start really, start really caring for those things. You will need gauges, so you could keep an eye out on this. Uh, you don't want to lose oil pressure when throwing boosts at it. You want to run oil catch cans. You want to have a good AFR gauge. Um, literally everything you want an IAT gauge. You want to make sure everything's staying nice and cool. Heat is the problem with boost. Now I don't say all this to scare you, I just say it because it's the truth. With boost becomes a little bit more responsibility to keep your car running nicely. You gotta definitely make sure all of this stuff is within parameters. The sounds they make is so good. The cons of a boosted application is space. Usually when you add boost, uh, particularly supercharger, turbocharger, even nitrous. Nitrous is not as bad, um, but you're taking up engine space, which means you're gonna have to work around these things to maintenance the engine. So specifically, turbos being the worst, um, you have a whole lot more intercooler piping. Uh, well, you have a whole lot more pieces. So you got a lot more moving parts that you're gonna have to deal with. You got your exhaust parts and you have the turbo itself. So however you got it routed, hopefully it's very simple, but if it's not very simple, it's gonna make it a little more difficult to change spark plugs and do a little bit of everything on the car. So it's not as easy to maintenance because of all the extra parts. You will have to upgrade your fuel system. You, you probably should do this on both applications, on NA or boosted, but specifically more so boosted because it takes a whole, whole lot more fuel 
to run a boosted setup. Now with, with the boosted setup and the fuel, you wanna make sure it's optimum. Um, anytime you have a drop in fuel pressure, you're gonna have issues on that motor, especially if you're making the same amount of boost all the time. Um, so this could cause premature failure on your engines. You don't want this, definitely keep an eye on it. Now boosted applications are typically harder to tune because you, like I said, you're adding more fuel, so you're, the tuner is gonna have to change a, a bit of your fuel mapping. Um, they're gonna have to take into account all the new vacuum or boost you added in there um, and drivability. So you may have to change cams um, depending on your setup. There's a few things that go into it. So tuning may be a little bit different depending on who you are and what route you go. Most likely, I'm very biased. I, I want more of the boosted route. I love my boosted car. I love my NA car. Honestly, I want it boosted too. Either way you go, both could be super fun. Both could be very fast. If you have any comments, or if you feel like trolling, let me know in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. I'm Trey Herrera. Peace.